Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth edition of the Redmus TV Outer Dwarfs podcast. Here we have some special guests today. I'm your host, Rakoi. Played uh, Planet Sites in 2012, 13, something like that. Always been on Redmist. And we also have Alec for RBRN. Hello, I'm Alec. I'm one of the outfit leads for RBRN and I've been playing Planet Side off and on since about 2013. We also have Mitch today. Hi, I'm uh, Mitch. Been uh, an officer at Red Mist since 2014 and been playing Planet Side since the beta. We also have Back, back or Lost and Murdoch. Hmm. That's uh, true. Yeah, uh, Murdoch, Alfred leader for uh, Broken Arrow on Cobalt and been playing for the last nine years. We also have Path Daddy with a new background again. Always, always a new one. Yeah, it's me, Puff, uh, and I'm the air lead for Hydra. And then the first time somebody of RE4, the composer in C, welcome. Yeah, hi, I'm the composer in C. I'm playing Planet Side since like 2019, roughly. Joined Reapers around the same time. Currently, I'm one of the outfit leads and infantry SL in the Outfit Wars team. Okay, thank you all for joining, first of all. Um, first, the first game we're going to talk about is uh, Reapers versus RBRN. Um, both Alec and Composer, I think, played in it, and Path was also casting it, so we're going to have a lot of views on this. Maybe first from the caster point of view, how did that game go? Uh, pretty unexpected, honestly. We, we fought in the beginning at maybe a closer match, but Reapers pretty much steamrolled RBRN in the end, and uh, yeah, it was unexpected. How how did it feel for for RBRN, uh, Alec? Yeah, no, definitely. We expected it to be a bit more even as well, but uh, yeah, no. In the end, uh, yeah, it was basically a, a fighting retreat all the way back to our alpha or to our Nexus Alpha. We ended up on the red team. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some good holds on uh, Granite Hat and Bitter Gorge, but they uh, they were very powerful in the right lane. Uh, they changed it up from what they did the last three matches. We really analyzed the last three matches they played. They were very heavy on armor with a little bit of air. This time they had quite decent air. We were not able to match it. And they barely had any armor for the middle bases, which meant they also had a lot of infantry up. And yeah, they had quite decent infantry. So yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe the composer, as you were, I think, one of the infantry leaders for that match, right? Uh, yes. Um... I have to say, I can only agree, this was quite a surprise victory. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, was, um, I was expecting more resistance, in a way. It's kind of weird. I mean, I know RBRN, I know Alec uh, f through our joint ops. I kind of know what the infantry is capable of and vice versa. And it was surprising, I have to say. Yeah. But also, things worked re really well, well in our platoon. Do you mainly think it was tactics, or did it came down mainly to the individual skill level of uh, people? Mm, maybe a tactic problem. Because I remember that big fight at Bitter Gorge, and meanwhile we were getting ready to attack the Warpgate base, and you guys from RBRN, you were sitting at Bitter Gorge, and... Well. Yeah, the thing we had going on there, we had two squads going to Nexus Secure, and they were a fraction too late on point. The second my guys got mm. on point, the Nexus Alpha had been taking for like two seconds. They were just too late on Nexus Secure. Yeah, that, so... was, uh, that, was, that was very annoying indeed, because we planned to have a backup there going on Nexus Secure, but they were just too late on the breach. They were still dealing with some of the spawns you had set up. You guys had a very nice cloak Sunday on short that the first time we tried to have a squad bridge in, they hadn't noticed it. So they managed to get on point, but then mm -hmm. immediately got wiped off again because you guys could respawn from that cloak suddenly on short. Yeah, I, th I think for sure for for those bases, like you need to have, like you, if you have air control, you could go from gals and stuff, but like having that cloak suddenly and like next to the base is very, very beneficial. Like you first want to destroy the enemy Sundays. Same for, for capturing I think the, the Nexus, uh, like Alpha, for example, like if you don't have Sunday spawns, it's super hard to hold. I think, uh, I think like ground vehicles are, are worth a decent amount if, if you can provide spawns with them, of course. Yeah, definitely. And that's the reason why we managed to bust them off point, I think, twice on Nexus Alpha, because we managed to pull our own uh, counter armor. 
wiped their spawns and then push in. Uh, but by the third time, basically everyone was out in their nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you also had some really interesting end locations for deploying ants on, on the rooftops. Reapers. Oh, yeah, that we was, spotted That was kind of well. fun to watch. Them. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I also watched your uh, your VOD afterwards, and I saw that cloak zombie on the warp gate. So I was like, "No." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Sunny was very helpful. <laughs> yeah, we gathered because we were really wondering, like, why are they coming from the back? But on the other side, we were locked inside on our side of the defense, so we didn't really we were in no position to go and look outside because we also didn't really have any air superiority to go check for us. And and you also don't look towards your own warp gate, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It was, was a good place, man. It was fun. Yeah, did you guys have uh, more people than usual in the infantry? Because normally, I, I know vers when we versus RE4, they had a lot of people in vehicles in general. Composer. Yeah, for this round, our usual armor guys were playing a bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. Meaning they would switch depending on what was needed. So, for example, Nexus Secure, that wasn't actually our main infantry, that were our armor guys who kept that. Well, we oh, kept nice. you guys busy on Bitter Gorge. Very interesting, I would say. Like, make it, may, I think everyone needs to be flexible. Even air players can, can be called to the ground if needed. Like, some, sometimes you just need bodies on point, and then you need to get them out of an aircraft, for sure. For I think for Nexus Alpha, it's like, for sure, you need every squad close to there if you want to cap something like that. Um, yeah, you can maybe keep like one or two people in the air, but you cannot have an entire squad in the air if you want to actively attack it or defend it like both sides. Yeah. Yeah, we had it last week, right? Um, why Repos lost uh, last week's match, maybe? Because they, they had people mm -hmm. like sitting useless in, in vehicles. And it's great that you changed your tactics and maybe even listened to the podcast or to other people or maybe even got it yourself that it's not the way to play and uh, you adapted and uh, you won. So it's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's go over, I would say, to the next game. Probably, like, one of the most controversial games of the whole weekend was Thurgers versus Boys. Thurgers won with 41 kills, and Boys had 21 kills. Um, let me see if I can find how many people were on both teams. I think Thurgers seven had 7, four. and Boys had 4. What do you guys in general think of that? I uh, generally want to applaud Zerg Russ for managing to overpop even in Alphard Wars. That's kind of amazing. But uh, other than that, I mean, I kind of want to know how this whole thing went down because we all know the one side, the, uh, the post that Zealous made. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of curious to know if the no-show or the low show from uh, from Zerg Russ was because they knew this was going to happen, or maybe they were basically doing the same thing. Yeah, that's a good question. Did they not care at all? Because Zerg Russ was out for sure. Boys could have been in the top 8 if they actually played the game. They could have been in, but I guess they decided do not be in. I guess that's good for RBRN. That gives them at least one more one more game in the Alfred Wars because they actually want to play. And I would say boys. Uh, I saw some people on their Discord that wanted to play. And for I feel sad for those guys who actually wanted to play Alfred Wars. Thought, oh, my Alfred is signing up for it. So we're going to play the matches. But then they decide to bail out, I guess. Or after the last one. Um, Mitch, what do you think of that? Yourself? Honestly... It feels so alien to me, uh, since you would expect this event is like uh, quite new to plan side, and you would uh, expect that everyone would have a competitive mindset. And as Pep Daddy said on the, the uh, on Reddit, uh, yeah, it's just uh, alien, honestly, to to sign up to for something and then just uh, quit halfway. That's not how you play competitive things, like. Just don't stand up in the first place then if you don't want to fight uh, against people who are actually putting in the time because uh, 30 minutes, uh, uh, investing 30 minutes into a strategy is too much for you. And especially if you are online anyways and just want to play a normal fighter ops, so you have the people, you yourself are also online and it's also uh, it's also um, 3PG, so just go into the match and play it, right? 
don't do any tactics, just play it. Yeah, but... I think uh, the fight itself would be even more fun than live ops because you know, you're going to yeah. have always even fights. You have mm -hmm. uh, even fighting chances on both sides. Just don't do ops and play like a normal uh, uh, live game. I, I have no idea. This, this is so alien, so weird. Uh, I hope uh, we've done something about it, but probably not, honestly. Uh, yeah, like, I think in the worst thing is just like the risk of like wasting 48 other people's uh, evening kind of or match. I think that that's the worst. Like you're wasting other people's time with a no show because they maybe even like was happy about a, a match and it, that that it, there's just none right. And especially like this year because of the two v two, we have a lot more matches instead of the one v one v one last mm -hmm. year. Yeah, and the the casting stuff is kind of like we don't have that many people, and it was like always a struggle to get people to to cast matches, right? And we also like some some matches aren't covered, and it could be like someone could have thought, yeah, maybe that's like a lower bracket match. Maybe it's also fun to watch such a thing, and then we would have like wasted two people casting a no show, and I think that's it's just that behavior is like unacceptable, honestly. I have a weird question. Does anyone remember boys' match history? So they played, I know they played Reapers, they played Reborn, and was this their third match, fourth match? I can't remember. Fourth. Uh, fourth. Yeah, their first fourth. match was against one versus four. Yeah. Then against NC Reborn. Then Reapers. Then Reapers and then, then Zergrass. No, no we never played against them. I don't, yeah, yeah you did. You, you did one match. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Third match was Hydra versus Boys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the things he was talking about, like, oh, uh, I'm going to go up against these uh, super sweaty try-hard outfits and uh, all of my members are going to get burned out. I mean, it didn't really come to fruition when I think about it. Like, no, he wasn't it's... going against, like, uh, okay, like, Dior, Hot, Hydra, Red Mist, and yeah, okay. You you would get really frustrated because of that. Like he, those were winnable outfits, some of them at least. Yeah, but he was like writing about the next. Like if they won, they would have been at the eighth spot, right? And they would face hot in that case. And he didn't want to do that, so yeah, they did a no show, kinda. Because... And I think that the worst, like, I mean, if you do a no show, then do a no show, right? But writing such a weird Discord message and justifying it. That was the weirdest part, honestly, with, like, bullshit excuses. I have actually a question for all yeah. of you. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think if the devs would implement, like, a forfeit button for the outfit leader for this kind of situation? No. No? Um, no? no? You, you're still, like, the, the opponent still signs up, has still 48 players sitting yeah, in yeah. speak, waiting for the match, right? And then okay. the match starts, and it's instant forfeit. Wow. For yeah, and, and also, mm -hmm. like, for for example, the casters, like I I cast only one game before, but like it's it's hard at least to cast the Cobalt games because this one, other than the RBN versus uh, um, RE4, sorry, the all the good like all the other games were were around the same time. So for casters, it's it's hard to like cast all the games because Cobalt doesn't have that many people casting already. For for other servers, it, it was even worse. Like Miller, I think. Not barely, any, like, all of the outfits got casted. I think on Cobalt, close to every outfit got casted at least once. Something like that. So, like, you're wasting people their time. They they sign up to, like, cast that match, for example. Like, way before. Um, I, th I think Path Daddy for, for the RV4 versus RBRN, he, he, he signed up to cast that on Monday or something. Like, there, there goes time in that as well. And he needs to find a co-caster up this stuff for stream yeah, like people don't think about it because a decent amount in time just like casting those games as well and like if you i think his discord message all message also showed like the mindset of him because if you even like if you sign up in a competition and you know it's a competition and then calling better outfits just try hearts i mean then don't sign up Right? I mean, if you call them tryouts because they compete and try to do their best, then then there's like there's a huge issue. Then don't sign up for it. Play live, overpop there, it's fine. 
I don't get it. You know, I gotta be like, if I was in his position, like, um, like I would have, I think I would have two options. So either I go like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Like we signed up, we're going to take an L let's take the L sure. Or, um, like for example, the match is going to be, uh, boys versus hot or whatever. I would message the outfit lead that I'm about to go against and go like, listen, I know like my outfit is going to lose. Let's at least like have fun in the match. Like let's do something stupid, like knife fights on bitter gorge or whatever. And like you're gonna get the W, but at least the forty eight guys I have signed up are gonna have fun or something stupid like that. Yeah, or do it in like in the, like you know like Sunday evening, you know who you go go against, and then like the next seventy four hours, write that other outfit lead and say, yeah, we're gonna do a no show. But not like a day before or like a few hours before and just like using bullshit excuses. He doesn't want to invest time. And I mean, what, what how many uh, outfit members has boys? I have like 800 or even above 1000. I don't know. Could be. I have no clue. Well, what is this outfit when he needs three hours to message people to play for him? Like, why do you sign up then? The, the, I mean, do you guys do that in your outfits? Do you need to message three hours around to get your people? I think like for, yes. for for us how it works is basically yeah you have like a sign up thing I think most outfits just use it yeah. then people yeah. just like click whenever they can then if you're missing a few people you're gonna message some people so like with the question yo can you play but it's not gonna take that long to get like for example the 10 extra spots and if you don't have the 10 extra yeah then that's it basically um but they could have they could have taken it another way as well if they were doing ops anyway they could have just said oh boys let's not put a strat into this let's just do it casual you have your 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 platoon just on on nexus and you just like put squad paint pawns literally play it like that you could exactly. make it simple you could go with for a full platoon on one base and just try to cap that one gaze against a hard opponent by bashing 48 people at something you know and yeah. it will be more fun experience than life. Doesn't matter what. On life, like, there's overpop and other people coming in. And, I mean, if you re rely on that, I mean, sure, then life is the better place for you, right? And you have more fun on life if you rely on popping on 50-50 fights and then overpopping it to 80 to, to, to 20. Then sure, right? But he always says that it, it's he's, like, not like other circuits and they don't circ and whatever bullshit. I, it's just, just a bullshit excuse and I think he shouldn't even never ever written that that discord message but it made it even worse even it, hilarious actually because if, if you like i watched a few of his youtube videos and he he talks a lot about that he wants 50 50 fights with the old spawn system back in etc etc but here you have the most 50 50 that you can have and then you don't play that while you constantly want 50 50 on life and when you get 50 50 you choose to not even like, you choose to sign up for it, then play basically two matches, actually play them. Then one match, you only sent, like, basically half a team, I think. Against, really? Yeah, I think against Aged. I don't think they had a full platoon, barely not. Um, And then on Zerg Rush, you don't even show up. Well, you could have actually played two more proper... Like, at least they could have had three more full games if they wanted. And now I think they had two, like, a full platoon. So I I actually uh, I actually wonder what what their how it is in their outfit like because we we hear what Zealous thinks right but we don't I like I personally don't know what any average boys outfit member thinks maybe they just don't care you know that could be a thing as well I don't think he thinks much like he's talking bullshit nonstop and then contradicts himself the next video and yeah I mean he it's not like I mean if an opponent like yesterday was like Hydra or hot, then okay, maybe, but it was against 3PG, actually a team in their tier, right? So they had a good shot at mm -hmm. winning this and having a fun match, and he just said, no, forget it. Yeah. They, they could have done something crazy. They could have said, like, yo, we're gonna pull 20 rap girls and see how that works, just for fun, you know? Or or do, like, a massive match crash on something like, say, like, put 20 maxes on a base. Just, just try some fun shit. Uh, like for sure against 3PG, something like that could work, I feel, if you do it organized. Um, but yeah, I guess they chose not to fight that game. 
Um, I would say we we gonna move on to the Saturday. Otherwise, we're gonna be uh talking mm -hmm. one hour just about that one game that basically no one played in. Um, the first game we're gonna talk about is Hydro versus Red Mist. Um, I think most of us saw it. I'm not sure if everyone did. Um, I played in it. Mitch sadly disconnected before the game. Um, and then Path Daddy also played in it. So. Maybe, how was it for somebody who spectated first? I've been watching the whole game, uh, so I can go first. Go for it, Mitch. So, basically, uh, from a tactics point of view, because I was supposed to squad lead uh, Alpha, we wanted to do the same thing uh, as the last time we fought uh, Hydra. So, with quick responses and having uh, actually uh, capitalizing on being faster uh, and a bit more organized, at least from our point of view. Um, however, when multiple squad leads that played last time couldn't play, uh, some excuses, sorry, uh, I couldn't play and, uh, it just kind of fell apart. And after probably Hydra, Path that you probably noticed as well, uh, we had a, quite a few people who weren't there last time who could actually keep up, uh, the 1v1s against you guys or actually, uh, keep, uh, keep kind of affair. But it just fell apart really quickly. And once uh, you, you run out of nanites, uh, it's just a snowballing effect, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think the biggest difference was that we this time actually had like ten people more playing. I mean, okay, I think... fair. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We only like we only had like thirty nine people last time we played against you, and it's like you are always underpopped, and then it's so much easier for you as well, like to move around yeah. that and to capture bases. And we had like no air like no real air people we substituted a lot into the air mm -hmm. and this match we also had like some like exo blade and fuji blade and even death blade and so we had like a good air lineup as well and kept the air quite good in check i think this time and that made a huge difference as well like securing spawns and securing galaxies securing valkyries that was that was good yeah yeah okay i i personally uh, think um you you guys like i think after like I think it was kind of even, like not even in the air, but we still had, we still could cont contest there, like for the first five, six minutes, I would say. And then after it, there was like, I think you guys did a decent, like just a push, just with just re reavers. And then you you really smashed our air and we really struggled, uh, like to keep everything up. Even even like some pilots still trying to air to ground, even though after we, <laughs> we, we lost the air fight. That was funny to see, trying to help us out. But I think once you have the air control, you, you you're so much more free in your movement around the map. That makes it very hard um, to move around. I I think one right thing that we did though is even though we're on we were on the back foot, like I think in the earlier stages of the game, we were still attacking a little bit on the other side of the map. Well, delayed it a bit, but the opener I would say didn't go as planned for sure. Um. But we, we 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 have some work still to do. But I think I think we will get there. I mean, the opener was actually close. I think with the middle base, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that could have <laughs> went either way. So I think maybe it was a little bit lucky as well. And I think if we lost that one, it would be like a, a little bit different. But in the end, we should like still come ahead. Yeah. But it wouldn't be like from the beginning like that. And I think we also we we tried too fast to go for the nexus uh, base like we left the bottom part of the map uh, a little bit uh, unattended and uh, you uh, were on nexus secure is that right yeah yeah. yeah 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 and then we were like a little bit struggling there and then we had up uh, but already in your in your home base and at some point we said like okay let's let's do it properly we kept everything and then mm -hmm. we go for the last base and then i think that was fine in the end I feel just like it just compounded. You guys brought better, more and better people, or even the numbers, and uh, we just had people, uh, so many people missing from last time that actually uh, could keep up with you guys. Yeah, yeah and, and if you miss squad leaders, that's really like that. We really we hurts. missed two squad leaders yeah, from that, last time. Yeah, that really hurts for sure. Yeah. Always. I think uh, when it comes to like two outfits. Uh, like Hydra and Redness, that both like understand how both the game and the map is played. Um, you're not going to see a lot of differences uh, coming up to like, 
oh, they did a play for that base and the uh, like the other PL didn't anticipate it and now the match is snowballing. It's it was pretty equal as far as I've seen, like going for the correct bases. And it just came down to individual skill, both like in the opener and like in the base to base fights. And Hydra, Hydra clicks heads good. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Also, doesn't help that some Red Mist players uh, think that they can keep up with Hydra players, and they don't go for shotguns or anything. You can, <laughs> you can, you can, you can tell them every, whatever you want to tell them, but they have a bit too big ego, and they get uh, destroyed afterwards. Yeah, that's that's pretty bad, actually. I think, yeah. That's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As a squad but, leader, I can get really annoyed by that. Let's put it that way. But to give props, actually, like, some fights are pretty close, and I think also really fun. And you didn't lose your home base, right? You defended that pretty yeah. well. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the main thing with the, with the home base is we, we didn't allow you guys to put any Sundays up, at least for a long time. And that made it very hard to get spawn logistics in for everyone. Like, for example, like, I would say at least two, maybe two squads had, like, a beacon, but, like, getting your other people there without having any Sundays up is very hard uh, if you just don't have... Like, if that one squad is wiped, they, they're not able to get back on point if they don't have any Sundays, basically. If you deny and that. And I also think for the last home base... I think uh, Kretian said it as well. I think if you, if you want to cap that, like you either have to be like, there's a huge skill difference, right? Mm -hmm. Or you actually need to do some planning and some prep for it. And we didn't do any prep. And we had like random people bringing in Sundays, random people pulling maxes. We had no NGs. And that's th that was the issue. I think if you want to cap it, you need some strats and some planning into it. And yeah, if you don't have it, it's too easy to defend. And you did a super good job with cleaning out Sundays and our armor in between. Oh. I, I think we, we struggled as well last week like to capture RE4's uh, home base. They they basically did the same what we did to you guys. They just didn't allow us to set up spawns. And then that home base, you have so many angles into that point room. It's very hard mm -hmm. to hold. Because you basically need to defend outside the point room like to be able to hold the base. But you don't want to leave the point room open as well. It's it's like you have so many angles that you need to defend for. You need your full platoon there, basically, with force multipliers. Uh, otherwise, you it's so hard to cap. I think the biggest problem is that uh, from just that base alone, uh, if one side fails, everything else collapses, mm -hmm. like a house of cards. So if you make a breakthrough on one spot, uh, everything else gets weaker. And it's really hard to patch back up because the point itself is like a, such a big open space. Yeah. Um, yeah anybody... You gotta have your uh, rotations like really on point for this uh, for the last base for sure. And I actually also think it's a good last base, right? You can't ground pound it. Mm -hmm. Um, the seven minute cap timer is good, and and how how it's designed. Uh, I think they did a good job with it actually. Yeah, for, for a last base, it is base. Uh, I, better than putting a, a tech blend on M station there. Yes. Yeah, I'd, it would I, be horrible if this base was in the center or something. Yeah, but for oh, a last base. <laughs> no, I think everyone no. would ignore it and go around. It. <laughs> <laughs> to be uh, to be honest, once you cap it, it's very strong, you know. So maybe everyone would go for it in the start then. Yeah. But I, I would say for a warp gate base, it's really good because. If you capture that base, it means you're really dominant, yeah. like in your match, and you deserve to capture that base, basically. It's a, a little bit extra pride, right? Taking mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it also holds your mood a bit if you lose the game, but you're still able to hold that one home base, you know? It keeps the spirit at least a bit up that you weren't fully beaten, if that makes sense. Um, I would say let's go to the next match, Dior versus Hot. Um, their hot one, I would say, quite convincingly against Dior, but Dior still put up a very good fight, I would say. I uh, can't wait for the montage. <laughs> Which one, though? The host one or the <laughs> the character name montage? The uh, the I kill one uh, one vanguard and uh, turn it into a video. Yeah. Uh, I. 
I didn't watch the whole match. I skimmed a little bit through it, and I think Hotz really managed to outplay Dior on every single aspect. I think Dior even had their air up, and they still got ground pounded, and uh, uh, Hot contested really well, and they moved around the map pretty well, and Doc was streaming today, and then he also said, like, if he... I think, like he said, he thinks that was the, like the perfect, perfect off it was match. Like everything mm -hmm. went perfectly for them, and that's how how you should play off it was. And yeah, they really improved over the the um the matches as well. Like they also found some some um some issues with their lineup, and uh, and they fixed that. And I think Hot is actually winning that uh, competition. Pretty sure they're pretty unbeatable. Yeah, their yeah. opener was also very strong this time. Last time, I remember that Dior had quite a strong opening and then Hot came back from it, but this time around, it was just Hot steamrolling from the start. What is maybe very interesting to see, like, Dior is very known for their air, but if you look at Reavers versus Mosquito Girls, Reavers were at 370 and Mosquito were at 200. The Reavers were at a KD of 2.5 and the Mosquitoes up of 1.2. I think... That's very surprising, as Dior is being known for such being such dominant in the air. But I think Hot also had a lot more revenge up than they usually do. I mean, going I'm for pretty Ross, sure Hot had about one and a half squad of revenge up or something. Yeah, and and going for raw skill, Hot has really really good air players as well. Like skill wise, they have the better air players than Dior. I think Dior is just known for being like air heavy. And compared to like other midfits, uh, they they are pretty dominant there. But against Hot, um, their air players are excellent. There, there's no way. And they also have like a lot of of lane smash experience and other off it was experience and uh, group fight experience. And I still think Hot, Dior lacks though that experience and leadership experience. They just can't keep up. Do you think it comes down to leader leadership when uh, when like two high skilled teams are involved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like the coordination between the the areas, like between the infantry and the air, and then mm. the, what the air like needs to do, like reading the map as well, uh, knowing like where they can help, even if they get no orders, right? Killing Sundays, and I, I think that, that makes a huge difference actually. That's, a, that's that's a, like a very interesting take actually because I from what I've learned or noticed like when you reach like a certain point in like in the, your individual skill uh, squads uh, don't really need leadership like usually you have a good SL that knows where they need to be or what they should be doing right now so it's like it's it's an interesting take from like one of the people I consider like a very good player. I think, like, if it's two really good outfits playing against each other, that le then then leadership actually matters the most. Because that, that's the difference you have then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, no, that's fair. Yeah, if it's, like, an uneven game, if you're, if you're lacking a strategy, you will still snowball the enemy. Because just if you just win, every, like, all the duels, but you're just... Like, if, if you have 12 people on a base, they have, like, for example, 18. But those 12 people keep winning against those 18. Even if they're in a strategic disadvantage, but they're just better players, you will still win. That makes oh, sense. Yeah, sure. But if the yeah. game is close enough, it will come down to tactics as well, for sure. Like, yeah, tactics are there. Yeah. Coordination is the main, the main thing. Like, sure, the, the players, like, good players know what to do on the base, right? And capping it. But what to do afterwards? Like if they see, oh yeah, there's a, maybe a cap going in the middle, I gonna deploy there, right? And the the infantry of, on the other side of the map thinks exactly the same. Then you have suddenly 48 people all in the one one base, and you lose the other two bases on the sides. Then that's not good, right? So I think it's not tactics. It's more like coordination and coordination between all three areas, like air, infantry, and and armor. That that's what comes down, and that's really important in those matches. And also, also coordination just in, on the squad level, like infantry wise. Like, if you're not trading, and if, for example, if you have a two v two, 
and and you trade and you get your your medic gets like your, your guy up again it's a lot better than one guy just getting a five kill but those five people just get revived again it doesn't really matter that he killed five people that makes sense oh for sure yeah I think you could be really good, get a lot of kills in an Alpha War game, but that doesn't mean that you ex like did super well in the team-wise aspect. Um, may maybe what's what's interesting also to look at what or how do you think H would go against Hot? It's not gonna happen yet, but how do you think that would go? the struggle to get 48 players at first <laughs> mm -hmm. and then uh, i think we put, like we, we get smashed like we don't put effort into it like we just play the matches um i don't know if gretchen would do some strats against hot um i think air wise we would couldn't contest either because we just don't have the air players uh and uh, I think we could hold on pretty good, and I don't think we would like lose the the home base. Mm -hmm. But we should like pretty. It would be pretty. Uh, it's not a storm, but we would lose, one hundred percent. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, then we go to the last game that was Bog versus one versus four. Murdoch, how was that? Um. We already played them once, and uh, we got smoked. Mm -hmm. So uh, we took our lessons. I mean, one versus four, I think, yeah, it was the first match that we were like, okay. Like, after the Reborn match, I had a discussion with, like, the guys and asked them, like, do we want to just keep on, like, half-assing uh, the matches, or do we want to take it seriously? And uh, they said that they wanted to do it, like, actual try hard the alpha war season and uh, we right after that had the 1vs4 match when we got absolutely destroyed and i was like okay uh, if we want to stay in the game we need to start actually training and doing more of what we used to do mm -hmm. uh and i think it showed uh in this match specifically the Dior match, less so, but uh, mm -hmm. in this one, we were able to move a lot faster, uh, get air superiority, and just from from a PL perspective, I felt like I was uh, dictating the pace of the fight. Like, I could go wherever I wanted to, and because of how how my guys moved, I felt like I could get away with murder on, uh, on that match. Yeah, I think, uh, like, from watching the game, one versus four... Like, uh, just to say, Buck won pretty convincingly. Uh, but one versus four won the opener, I think, with getting two bases at the start. And then, uh, and then from then I on, think... it, it like, it went around, like, the tide turned, say it like that. I think they got one, we got one, and then, like, at some point, we lost the middle one, I remember. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that was kind of like a clencher moment, but we were able to like very quickly get up on it. And I think one of the 1vs4 members uh, talked about it yesterday in the uh, Archie podcast or stream, uh, where because of how they moved their uh, squads around, uh, Bach was able to move faster and set up back apps faster. And basically that's what dictated the match, I feel. What, what what do you think? Did you watch the game, the composer? Um, <clears throat> I did. Mm -hmm. uh, although there's not that many tactic insights I can have because I was at all seeing mm -hmm. it. Because like I know 1vs4 from life, they're rather quick with the deployment and everything. They're pretty good on their logistics and very good infantry players. And I knew Bog lost the first match. And so I watched the full match looking like, okay, what are they going to do? I know a few people that play in Bog. And it was magnificent to see what they did to them. It was really, really cool. Especially the later fights. Yeah, I, I think in general, Bok was the underdog to go into this matchup. But showed in the game that they were just faster. They, they were on the back apps faster. Um, I think they had like a bit of a timing edge and just push, pushed like so many lanes at the same time. It was, it was very hard 
for one versus four to be everywhere. And, and I think they had quite dominant air presence as well. Uh, I think that yeah. was like... Ah, oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, it was like that, that match also kind of shows like with, with proper leadership, right? Then the match looks completely different, right? I don't want to take credit for that because I feel like the entire outfit improved uh, because like the decision was made to take this actually like in a serious way and train as much as we can and actually prepare for matches and like figure out what we're doing wrong and how to improve on it. So, I mean, I mean me as a leader, dude, I, I just put waypoints on the map and I tell them where to go. Like, uh, the guys in my, uh, in my squads are, you know, like killing people and, uh, you know, running their holds properly. So all the credit goes to them. And of course, to 1vs4 as well for giving us like a crazy good fight. Yeah, I think that match was the was the best one overall for this weekend. Like, for, like close close wise, it was I think the closest game for the Cobalt matches for sure. And I think it was most interesting because I think both teams ha have the the skill pool pool of people to be able to beat each other. But it showed like like working together and just actually training as well. Like it, I think if you proper train for it and work together, you, you're able to put yourself at a higher level. As, as a group yourself than you were before. Hope this goes over to live. If people are listening, improve your outfits on live so we can have better fights. Thanks. I yeah. think you will never have good, as like you can have good fights on, on live, but in, in the end, it's not in your hand, right? I mean, you can have a good fight and then the random circuit can come and drops. 30 people on that base, and then the fight is shit. Doesn't matter what you do, right? <laughs> it's it's, yeah, it's the sure. player based making the fights bad. <laughs> Not the game, yeah. actually. I, I hope people are like watching this season and actually seeing what outfits can do on like a on even grounds formats. And you know, like uh, there's a lot of uh, podcasts and you know YouTube videos going around right now about like how should we play live and i mean i think both sides are completely missing the point and we should play live in the way that like because of how planet side works you know i should have fun my outfit should have fun but so should the other guys you know if i if i'm dropping uh 96 people on a base and i captured it yay i mean yeah we haven't shot anyone in seven minutes four minutes I haven't seen a guy wearing a different, you know, uniform. Nobody pressed Q because there's no one at the base. That that's mm -hmm. not fun, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of funny because <laughs> on Thursday it was, I think, RBN had had ops, and they kind of did exactly that. They dropped on on empty bases and had like ninety percent with like a full platoon, and they stared at the <laughs> capture point for three minutes, and nothing happened. And even the end of the alert, they dropped on the tech plant, and they couldn't even cap it. And <laughs> I wrote in Yelp that RBN, you can't cap that base anymore. And they were like at that point at that tech plant for three minutes already. And they wrote, "Oh yeah, you're right." And then suddenly the pop <laughs> was on some <laughs> some other base. I was I was a little bit weird, like watching that and knowing, yeah, they want to go against Reapers like uh, the next day. What, yeah, what? It's also like, one thing you have to keep in mind, those are very different parts of the outfit. So RBRN is basically, what is it now, close to a thousand people or something. Mm -hmm. And basically the core of RBRN is, well, basically all of them are casuals, basically. Um, so that means that mostly what we what is run normally on live is just open platoons. But there's a subset that really tries, uh, that's really going for outfit wars. That's where we've teamed up with uh, Oops and TDKD. And we have our what we call the op squad people that are participating in outfit wars. But those are we run very, very different ops throughout the week. So we have from what we would call triad ops, but you guys would probably call normal ops. And we have what we call the casual ops, which are just open platoons. Yeah. I, I guess that can makes I, sense. Go go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Uh yeah, sure. Um, given that like you had squad leaders and platoon leaders, you know, participating in alpha wars and seeing how the 50, 50 format actually works, do you think you guys can trickle that down to 
even people who are running uh, casual ops uh, in your outfit. Like, okay, you're running an open platoon, you got uh, 48 randoms on your, uh, uh, on your platoon, why not try to take them into like a 50-50 like a fight? Like try to initiate something or, you know, even have like uh, four squad leaders that you know and that you can, like, you understand that they can use their mic and put a waypoint where they should and, you know, just create like two even uh, 24 to 48 fights. Do you think that's something uh, feasible? in uh, RBRN. That is stuff we definitely already do, though the downside is for some reason, uh, whenever we do that, we also make sure we go heavy on support. We bring in a lot of Sundays. And I remember one of our ops, it was two weeks ago, we only had one and a half squat, but we were very heavy on logistics. And for some reason, everywhere we went, after two minutes, we'd leave because like 48 randoms would have spawned in on the Sundays. So it's also, there, there may be a lot of RBRN techs you may think it is something that we have organized because we have a lot of people in our outfit, but that might not even be an active ops. That might also be people that are currently not participating in a platoon or anything. It really depends on the day. But it's definitely not the overpops that we are going for. It is something that does sometimes form, but it's definitely that we see, oh, it's a 50-50, let, let's drop a platoon on it. What does happen from time to time is we see something like a 70-30 and we try to even it out. But then there is another platoon, not by us, but it, let it be from another outfit on the NC that also drops at the same time. That is stuff that does happen because command chat on the NC site is very dead. I would say um, very, very understandable, but we're going to need to move on to the games of next week. So we have eight teams left, um, boys and Zergrush uh are out Zergers basically because they lost all the games what was kind of expected but they showed up to at least most of them and yeah boys chose themselves to be out people like that um probably we don't know which who will face what day but the first game or that is on my list say it like that will be hot versus rbrn alec how are you gonna win from hot what's the plan <laughs> <laughs> We're basically going to go in it probably like in the same fashion with it with the fight against Bok. And it is basically, we'll, we'll try to last as long as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit. Just a fight and retreat, make it, make it last as long as possible. So especially against the, the match against Bok, uh, we lost our center bases pretty quickly. Uh, but we did manage some nice backups on the side bases on the Nexus to really keep them off of it for a while. Yep. Um, can, can I expect to see like at least 20 galaxies in the opener or uh, or is that a uh, secret? 20 galaxies <laughs> not likely but uh, yeah we'll, we'll have to see how we approach it. Like we of course there is no way in hell we are winning this. There is also no way in hell, way in hell we're ever going to keep our nexus. So we're, we're just going to make the match as long, last as long as possible. I, I think you can keep the... If you hold the ground it, it won't be easy for sure. If you don't let them able to spawn. I wouldn't defend the Nexus from the start, of course. But you you can hold the Nexus for a long time if you if you hold off their spawn space. But it won't be easy for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll see how long it lasts. We'll see. Uh, and then then we we got another very close game on Organs. H versus RE4. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's gonna um, be fun, I think. Yeah, I I hope so. Um, we have some. Sp plans uh, basically we're going to try to last as long as we can maybe we even cap a base we'll see <laughs> and yeah put up the best fight we can i i guess it also depends if it's on a friday again we we, we all know <laughs> adriel struggled a little bit <laughs> um if it's on the saturday there, i think there's a bigger chance there will be more people that's just known i would say at this point in outfit wash uh, so so I, I, that could be an advantage for RE4, like, if you have the, uh, like 6-7 people less, it's it's a huge disadvantage. It's not sure. 6 or 8, it's or, 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 like, or it's like Friday, it's gonna be like 12 less. Like, Friday really fucks us over. Like, there's no way. There's well, no way. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. But, but that, maybe that makes it even more interesting then, right? Let's see. Yeah, yeah like, like imagine, just imagine RE4 beating age. Oof. Composer, just make them think that the match is going to happen on a different day, and you got this. Yeah, okay. if it's on Saturday, just all DM them. It's on Friday. 
you know. Basically, you pulled the boogaloo that Devs pulled us on the first match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait a second. If RE4 wins, doesn't Herod Mist has to fa have to face H again? Some of that, no? No, I think if... I it don't, we think, I don't know how the second playoff works, actually. Like, I no idea, because the current way, we have now eight eight uh, outfits, right? Mm -hmm. And every, like, there's a winner in each match, so there's four winners. But the, we have a second phase of playoffs, so I don't know what's in the second phase of playoff happens. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that, like, yeah. Or there are like new new tiebreaker points, and you have like two matches in the playoffs, and then the best outfits in the in that will I don't know I have no idea like yeah yeah we'll I guess I guess we will find out by time how it actually works. It's kind of yeah. I I kind of wish we knew beforehand how how it worked that there was like a structure laid out on the, on like the wiki or something like that, so we had a proper ID. But I guess we will have to see. Um, then we also I think will be even match, at least for me, uh, Dior versus Red Mist. So basically, we're gonna probably, we're gonna hope to get every single squad leader into the game. That would be a great start. Um, and then uh, just go to town. Yeah, what is your plan against the air? The air? Yeah. Uh, right, currently, it's basically throw bodies at the po other problem. <laughs> <Throw it. laughs> so yeah, the the amount the amount of good pilots we've missed is very scarce, and every time we have someone who has uh, who's pretty decent at flying, basically everyone saves their nanites for that one person to pull as many uh, mossies as he can, and kill as many things as he can. So yeah, uh, just at the start we're just pre pulling everyone and just throwing as much fire and oil at the problem as we can and hope it uh it burns out itself somehow and if we lose the air we just go with 48 cloak flashes if they cannot see us <laughs> yes, they yes. can't hit us so we move secretly around the map i think i think that's gonna be great um and then the last game is gonna be bog versus one versus four again ooh, yep. rematch. Mm -hmm. Third time's the charm, I guess. I, I know ah. that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know. Like, if we managed to learn something from our match against them, I guess they managed to learn something from this week. And, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I feel like both teams are going to try to improve. And it's, honestly, I feel it's going to come down to personal skill. So it's, uh, you know, it's an open bet. I hope we win. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close match again and a fun, mm -hmm. fun match to watch 100%. Yes. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think with the, le the recent uh, improvements that Bach has made, I think Bach will take it this time. That's my opinion. I mean, here's hoping. I, I've been yeah. begging to have like matches against like. Uh, like Hot, Hydra, Red Mist, Reapers. I've been begging for a Reapers match since the season. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get it. Oh, we got our one Reaper game, all the rest is against Hydra, but <laughs> it seems we're going to play some more people this time. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a fun next week, for sure. Next time, just win more in the beginning, then you face the better teams as well, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just beat the ore, bro. It's easy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we we will try. <laughs> um, I I hope actually, like I I think it would be really fun to to like fight other outfits. I think like in a in a friendly way, if you could upset like set up fights, just like friendly fights on on Nexus, because I think a lot of the outfits want to face out other outfits that they weren't able to face. Like for example, I personally would love to to go and like fight Bok once. I think it just yes. would be a fun game. Like TR versus TR mass, who who is like mosquitoes versus mosquitoes. Everyone is gonna team kill a little bit more than normal. But I feel it's somewhat like we're always used to playing on the same side. It's fun to play against each other once as well. For sure. I I, I just hope they they release it on Jagger and figure out a way so people can 
or the best thing would be on live, right? Mm -hmm. If you can just sign up and do it on live. But for a work workaround, at least doing it on Jagger, I think that would be so amazing. Um, for for practicing, for testing strats, and actually to have just have fun matches, right? Without the comp also without actually the the tournament going on, and even maybe practicing for for the next season, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I really hope they they focus a little bit on that, and make it possible. Because I I think as well if you if other if they will open up the map after the Arch Wars. And it's gonna be the same map in the next one. What I hope, maybe like some updates to it, but I hope it will be a, roughly the same map. You're gonna see like a lot more things be tried as well. Because now, if you're against a good team, you don't always have the margin, like at least now in these coming matches, to try everything you wanna try. Because is that worth like ris risk of losing the game? Because you tried something completely different. That maybe doesn't work if it's close to like, for example, a bug versus one versus four match. You want to play what you know is will work, and like play the go meta, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I think we're gonna see Nexus again because I don't think anyone wants to play Desolation again. One v one v one after one v one. I I will I will not play it, and I think a lot of good outfits won't play it because it's just boring, right? To have the thoughts. The third team being the the kingmaker, and then you could put you can put in whatever you want, but you lose in the, still lose in the end, and mm -hmm. no one will sign up for that anymore. So I think the isolation is dead at that point. Yeah. I actually have a question for uh, people who have like plenty of uh, Jaeger experience. Um, would you say that Nexus in its current format is less or more interesting than Lane Smash? It's different, I think. It's just different. Um, I think big issue still is there are 48 players, right? Mm -hmm. That maybe fixes with proper system like um, alliances, right? Mm -hmm. We, we yeah. have to see how we implement that, and if it's even maybe cross faction alliances, that would be pretty pretty sick. Mm -hmm. And we have like Mossies and Reavers at the same in the same team, that would be like complete chaos though. But it would still be interesting <laughs> to have like Brawlers and Vanguards rolling together against the enemy. Um, but I think that it, it, it's still a 40 air players and lane smash is 20, 20, uh, 24, right? 24 things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two squads and just one lane. So lane smash is still fun. And the, the other thing is lane smash still has some restrictions, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Some certain weapons are banned. So it's make, it's more fun. And, uh, on live outfit wars on Nexus, just like pure chaos. And like everything is allowed, and you even see like there's a reason why a lot of NC outfits are like across servers in the first position now, right? Because uh, yeah, having the best shotgun max is pretty insane. Having uh, yep. the masthead is pretty insane. Uh, having a really good uh, infantry weapon arsenal is really insane. Having the best group fights, uh, Reaver ESF is pretty insane, and. Stuff like that makes like Nexus way more chaotic, and I think you can't say X or X is like more fun than the other. It's just like different. Right. It could be very oh, interesting if they if they disable certain weapons for the next Nexus. I think they could do it. I think it's technically possible to just disable, like for example, like you have uh, some implants, or um, or sorry, an infiltrator that disable basically a weapon, but that they disable like certain weapons just for being a like applied on next would be interesting. I would root I would root for disabling smoke because that because that makes casting a pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. we threw so much smoke in the next yeah. alpha. So it was so annoying actually yeah. But well, I mean that's maybe... also that is threat in the end, right? Having <laughs> yeah. vision scopes maybe <laughs> Well, I can say one thing to that. Everyone was annoyed, but but the squad that was throwing smokes around, <laughs> like we yeah. were calling it out as well. Like we can't see. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would. I would love to see uh, the lane smash rule set implemented, or at least tried out uh, for uh, the next uh, nexus. Uh, it doesn't have to be outfit wars. It can be just uh, some uh, kind of invitation of to outfits just to try it out. But honestly, like, it's impossible to do because, like, even lane smash, it's like, behind the scenes, like, getting a weapon banned or certain stuff is, like, 
it's no really... no I, I don't mean it like that i mean it like uh software wise from the developers the developers do it yeah but then the developers need to know what's what weapon should be gone right and honestly looking at the, the game uh, and looking at the direction the game is going they, they have no idea what weapon is actually a problem and an issue but give them the lane smash documents it's been proven that it works and it was really fun yeah Maybe yeah. then, uh, maybe we should do uh, after the Alpha Wars a podcast just about weapon balancing, and uh, <laughs> they may be listening to it. But who knows? Um, but I think for sure it was a good weekend. I think for uh, for Cobalt, other than the uh, the the no show match, I think everyone everyone really tried their best on their games. Everyone uh, were some close games, some less close. But other than that, I think everyone also had full platoons as well, and that was really nice to see. For sure. So I'm looking forward to uh, next week matches. And I want to thank you all for being here this weekend. Uh, for uh, giving your opinions. And I hope to see you once more. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.